As always, I've got you because I, I, I see you, I hear you in your struggle for a little inspo. And while you may not be finding it in the New York Times sports pages or LA Times sports pages, I have got just the remedy for you, Matt Welsh, and her name is Kamala Harris. She's got thoughts on what you might refer to as culture. And I think this is going to make you feel a lot better. Take a listen. Great. Well, I think culture is, it, it is a reflection of our moment and our time, Right. And, and, and <laughs> present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. And, oh, and we should always find times to express how we feel about the moment. That is a reflection of joy because, you know, it comes in the morning. <laughs> we have, we have to find what? ways to also <laughs> express the way we feel about the moment in terms of just having language and, and, and a connection to how people are experiencing life. And I think about it in that way, too. Huh? Huh? As my <laughs> Nana Teva used to say, huh? Why did no one intervene when there was somebody on stage <laughs> having a stroke? That seems to be rather rude. Good Lord. What that is the best morning. description? I mean, we should do contests on the fifth column of uh, Kamala Harris. He's like, you know, food is the thing that you put in your mouth. It is t- tasty. <laughs> it is food. It is calories. It's just like she's describing what culture kind of is, but not even really. And then just, just ramble. Wow, that was amazing. That's one of my favorite. Culture is Lord. how you feel about the moment. Oh, by the way, as you know, it's not her first time with the total... No fail mm. in offering a profundity of any kind. And my crack team in between watching The View and Chris Cuomo put this lovely 60 seconds together. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Oh, Watch. no. <laughs> it is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. We all believe that when we talk uh, about the children of the community, <laughs> they are a children of oh. the community. Um, talking about the significance exactly. of the passage of time. <laughs> Right. The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. I am here standing (laughs) here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank, because we have the ability to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And then to make the possible actually happen to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present and to be able to contextualize it, to understand where we exist in the history and in the moment as it relates not only to the past but the future. But let's always take a moment to also see what we have achieved thus far while we clearly Mm -hmm. see the moment that we are presently in. So we have achieved a lot. (laughs) <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying. She just repeats oh it. God. When you drive the car, you yes. get in and you go yes. to the location because you're in the car and you're driving there. It's yeah. like, what? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I have she's Lord. incredible. She's incredible. The master of tautology. It's the best thing <laughs> ever right. in American policy. She has a thing that she's good at. This is what she's good at. It's amazing. Right. May, long may she reign. I never want her to go anywhere. Right? I, I love listening to her. Her and Karine Jean Pierre. They're they're cut from yes. the same cloth. You know, just act, actually saying absolutely nothing with tons it's of words skill. toward that end. It is a skill. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be underestimated. It's a skill. It could be of one of those you, like, uh, sure. uh, sleep apps. You know, like listen to the rainforest. <laughs> never. You know, she just sort of like is saying this. The yeah. wall is the space. Yeah, that's it. what is it? Lore. ASMR, where she's whispering just <laughs> this words. Around. I have yeah. a new theory um, based on watching that video, the great uh, put together video, and I hope that people will YouTube this if you're listening. Otherwise, um, uh, that your staff put together. Um, watch your hands, which are very mm-hmm. active, active hands. I mm-hmm. here, this is a little bit out there theory, but me and RFK Jr. have been talking about it. Um, and it is that she's been taken over by some kind of like, uh, like the real Kamala is inside, but she's been taken over by some like alien or some AI technology or something. And when the hands are really starting to go, that is the interior Kamala trying to get our attention and saying, help. It's a cry for help. <laughs> Matt, the problem with your theory is that AI is smart. 
Ah, and yes. that's the problem, right? <laughs> it's written right into the name. Possibly be that. The one thing I did notice about that clip is that um, I was in Warsaw and I was about to meet the president, President Duda, and they canceled it because Kamala Harris was in town. And you showed a clip of that day where I was yeah. cooling my heels in the presidential palace, true story, in Warsaw waiting. And they were like, I'm sorry, Kamala Harris is here. And so rather than get a penetrating interview with the president of Poland, he had to sit next to a woman and he was like, I thought I spoke English. What is happening? I, I mean, right, right. am I not? Do I guess I don't speak this, English. And this, that's what that's, instead of talking to me, that's what he had to do. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> it's an embarrassment. Like, so we'll laugh at this because it's obvious drivel. But where, like the left-wing press, they don't like her. No, Even the Democrats don't like her. But remember mm. what they did to Dan Quayle? She's not getting that treatment by the press. They still, George, we still, George, every George, once yeah. in a while, give it like another six months and you'll get the hit piece on why we're all sexists and misogynists and racists for having any fun at her expense whatsoever. And that all these criticisms come from our bigotry at base. But they have done it. I mean, they're doing it They're doing it now, but they do it not in the way that they did with Dan Quayle or with George mm -hmm. W. Bush, is that they do the drip, drip, drip. I mean, there was a story about the turnover in her office. I mean, there was a story the other day in, in, in Politico about Joe Biden's anger issues. And I mean, mm, Joe Biden's been in, in, in politics for many, 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 many years. This mm -hmm. has been long known. If you look at books mm -hmm. from, you know, recounting the Obama presidency, there was a couple of references to this. People talking about how Joe Biden was like very difficult to deal with and he'd start yelling at people, et cetera. It never, it's never talked about until the time then there's a certain number of people who think it should be talked about. And I think those are the people that, number one, don't want her on the ticket. And number two, kind of know that he's a problem as a candidate and the machine of the DNC is not going to allow that. So you see these little stories that come out. Those come out, those are, uh, those are sources from the White House. The same thing was true with the Kamala Harris story in the New York Times about, you know, how she's out to lunch and how, you know, there's a huge staff turner and no one really likes her, that sort of thing. Those are all very targeted. Everything in politics is targeted. It's like a film. Every frame in a in a film, it's there for a reason. They set there, they set it up for a very long period of time. And when you when you see these stories about Kamala, they don't come out and do it the way they did it with George Bush and and um, Dan Quayle, which is ridicule because that you can never come back from. This is a kind of the controlled right. opposition from the inside, and they do that with her. It's true. It's it's much less damaging to say she or he um, is an angry bitch or bastard. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's less damaging to say that than to say, oh my God, she's an idiot. I mean, honestly, yes. I I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I did not think she was an idiot. I now think she's a moron. She's just, she's not that smart. I yeah. Forgive me, I'm still one of those people who gets wooed by titles. I'm like, she was the attorney general of the state of California. You know, like, mm -hmm. how dumb could she be? Like, dumb. The answer is very, very dumb is the answer. And I've come to that conclusion just with my own eyes and ears from watching and listening to her. She cannot put two sentences together. I mean, the old man is actually losing his mental faculties. She's just not a smart person. And it concerns me because that's all we have in line of the Democratic side. And as Trump's numbers continue to go up and up and up, and I realize some of the polls are showing him beating Joe Biden now in a hypothetical matchup, um, he's still very vulnerable. <laughs> he did not win in 2020. And it looks like it's going to be the same matchup. And honestly, Joe Biden's knocking on, you know, the Grim Reaper's door. And she mm. could be the president of the United States in the next six years by default if, if things go, you know, in, in a dark and upsetting way. I'm concerned. I well, there, have there, a, right. Go, Matt. No, you, please. Well, there are very few people that I like in American politics anyways, um, and <laughs> she's certainly not one of them. Um, but I have zero doubt whatsoever at this point that if anything were to happen to Joe Biden or if he were to decide, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I have just not. They would find someone else, Gavin Newsom, to run <laughs> as yeah, quickly exactly. as possible right, right. and yeah. push them to the forefront. There, there is doesn't seem to be any meaningful constituency for Kamala Harris. And the fact is that even when she became the president's pick for VP, it wasn't necessarily because he thought that there was this expectation that she would be so helpful on his ticket, apart from being generic, prominent black woman. That is what we were promised before mm -hmm. he selected her, not selected because of her qualifications, selected, but I suppose her qualifications in this particular case were the shape and shade of her genitalia, which, I mean, that is offensive on its face. I have shape two and theories shade that of her overlap. genitalia. Sure. Wow, that was, a, that was a line. She's got a 41% yes. approval rating, 56% dis. Who are the 41% who approve of Kamala Harris? I mean, honestly, I wonder. I don't Man, know. Those are people who just don't want to say the wrong thing when the pollster calls. Go ahead, Matt Welsh. 
Two theories are one that Americans right now are getting the politics that they deserve. Ladies, do you see those dark spots in the mirror? You want help making them go away? Introducing the dark spot corrector from Genucel, just in time for the summer. The dark spot corrector, with not one, but three cutting edge ingredients, goes to work fast to target sunspots, dark spots, liver spots, and even old discoloration, both on your face and your hands. You can now enjoy your summer sun, beach, and barbecues without those pesky spots. With Genucel, you will see results or you will get your money back, no questions asked. So go to genucel.com right now. Get your dark spot corrector with the new Genucel most popular package, all their best stuff, and now featuring summer essentials like the best-selling ultra retinol moisturizer with a powerful retinol alternative for safe use in the summer sun. Genucel.com slash MK60 for these amazing summer essentials and save over 70% off, 70% off their most popular package. Free shipping, free returns, excellent luxury skincare, all at 70% off. Genucel.com slash MK60, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash MK60. All orders include a mystery gift while supplies last. Genucel.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.